Hello, and welcome to this thing. Uh, I'm Icon. Nice to meet you all. Thanks for tuning in. So, in this video, I'm going to be doing my best to explain what I see as the underlying core of Sargon of Akkad's view of media criticism, which informs his response to Anita Sarkeesian's work, as well as the recent video uploaded by YouTuber and man who lies about both his name and size, Big Joel. We'll be taking a look at some of the arguments in Sargon's video, and talking about the assumptions that I believe underlie them. So, without further ado, Part 1. The Defense So, in Big Joel's video, he discusses arguments related to the work of feminist media critic Anita Sarkeesian, discussing in particular the responses to her points from two YouTubers, Sargon of Akkad and Thunderfoot. He talks mostly about Anita Sarkeesian's two major points in her videos, and the responses by these two YouTubers to these points, attempting to demonstrate that the arguments they use are ineffective at countering Anita's points. Sargon of Akkad, or Carl as I'll be calling him for the rest of this video, released a video in response, defending his points against Big Joel's criticisms, but in a rather strange way. See, instead of responding to Joel's main points against him, Carl makes a sort of reaction video, seemingly watching the video and pausing it to make points as he goes. Now, to anyone who's familiar with YouTube, this format probably doesn't seem all that strange. Plenty of channels make content like this. It's a pretty big staple of the sort of grammar of YouTube videos. However, I have kind of a problem with this. See, when responding to a video like Joel's, where he provides various specific counter-arguments, a few broader counter-arguments, and challenges his idea of the foundation of your arguments, it makes little sense to criticize this sentence by sentence. Joel formats his video more like a traditional essay, where he will make a claim and then expound on it, providing arguments to support his claim. But Carl's choice of format, when responding, obscures this style of presentation. Now, Carl is no stranger to misunderstanding how to engage with work he disagrees with. There's a link in the description that covers that topic, I recommend you check it out. But in this case, when Joel comes with cogent and seemingly good faith criticisms of Carl's position, it doesn't make much sense to respond in that way. Of course, this is assuming that Carl is engaging with criticism in earnest, with a desire to learn, self-reflect, and discuss differences of opinion rationally. Part 2. The Prosecution If you watch Carl's video expecting a response of Joel's video, you are actually engaging with his video incorrectly. See, the purpose of Carl's video is not actually to respond to anything Joel says in his video. The purpose of his video is to engender in the viewer one notion that I find troubling. Carl is looking to convince his viewers that discussion of art is impossible. Now, let's pause for a second, because that's a pretty big claim. I mean, in his video, he literally responds to things Joel says. That's what a response video is, right? Why am I assuming some sort of nefarious intent on his part? And where did I even get this idea from anyway? He never says that in his video. Well. I'll explain. Before I do that, though, here's a little note for any lefties watching this video. While I do think that a lot of the sexist attitudes he displays in his video are problematic, these ideas of gatekeeping and female weakness, pretty toxic, I won't be focusing on these aspects of his video. I won't be addressing them both because I want this video to be more accessible to people who support him, and because I don't believe that these ideas are relevant to the underlying assumption of his discussion of art. By all means, though, criticize him for these things yourself if you so desire. Throughout Carl's video, he reiterates the positions that Joel talks about in his video, that art should be understood similarly to how we understand the real world, and that a lack of explicit, violent outcomes as a result of exposure to media invalidates any claims made about that media's messages. We can see this in a few places, most notably in the clips here. It's caused no problems. We don't see rampaging murderous gangs of men hunting down women and taking them as slaves or something. Women aren't being affected by this at all. Let's assume that the, every every critique of these Sarkeesians was completely true. Well, wh okay, why? Why, why, do, why do we care? 
and it's not doing any harm for people to have ego fantasies. She never proves any harm for people having ego fantasies regarding male fantasies. And the alternative is what? Create them around female fantasies? You can say that the woman is not an actor in the story. She is the subject of the, the object of the story. And it is the men who are the actors, the subjects who are working their way, fighting their way through, you know, hordes of enemies in order to save her. Okay. An Eats Sarkeesian will frame that as patriarchal oppression, but a normal person would frame that as a love story. In fact, that's what Thunderfoot does. A story of personal heroism and self-sacrifice in order to save someone whom the, the agent cares about. That's the difference. If this was a hypothetical scenario, if this is a thought experiment that is the double dragon narrative, what happens to the girl if you don't go and save her? It's probably not as good as being saved by the patriarchy, isn't it? But my contention is it is a moral good that Dun the double dragon and all of these other games have young men saving young women, because ultimately that's real life, man. That is what really happens. I'm going to ignore that media is made up by people and can be whatever they want it to be, and that Anita Sarkeesian actually never claimed ever in any of her videos that video games cause people to become more physically violent, because these arguments have already been made. Rather, the point of including this is to show that Carl's perspective has remained consistent since he released the videos that Big Joel uses as examples of his arguments in Big Joel's own video. Yeah, I know the grammar is getting really confusing, sorry. His next set of arguments, however, the ones that run parallel to these in the video, all boil down to one idea. That criticism rooted in anything other than objective, measurable effects of a piece of media is totally pointless. Carl offers us a few arguments that put forth this idea in a couple of ways. For one, he says that Anita's reading of these video games is based on her personal biases. She has a certain perspective, so obviously she sees this text in this way, but if I disagree, then her criticism is irrelevant to me. We also see this in his rant after Joel talks about a hypothetical Nazi propaganda film named Lubenschluben. Carl puts forth the idea that condemning Lubenschluben, as presented in Joel's example, is an extension of a person's values, and if values are different for different people, then there's no real merit in discussing these objections, because there's no real way for you to argue for your position. Now, this idea, as common as it is among YouTube art critics, is fundamentally misguided. It assumes that arguments can't be made to convince people of things, which is a patently absurd notion. That's what analysis is. It's coming to a conclusion based on some form of evidence, and attempting to convince people of that conclusion using that evidence. If your values run contrary to mine, I can still attempt to appeal to your values in some way to see if you agree with my argument then. For instance, if I think depicting and endorsing sexist attitudes in games is wrong, but you don't care, then I can appeal to your values by arguing my conclusion through different avenues. If you care about truth and reason, I can say that games depicting these attitudes is bad, because it puts forth misrepresentations of reality. If you care about storytelling, I could argue that storytelling is less effective if it relies on tropes, and a story is less likely to connect with audience members if it endorses ideas that make them feel alienated. I can provide arguments to attempt to bridge our perspectives by demonstrating how my conclusion is compatible with your values. Part 3. The Verdict So, we can see that this idea that permeates throughout Carl's video, that judgments of media rooted in personal perspective are inarguable, is kind of weird. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense when we think about how we argue for things. So, since Carl's perspective here is so incredibly and obviously incorrect, there's another question we have to ask, and I've borrowed it from Joel. What is this idea here to do? Well, it's pretty simple. This idea is here to dismiss any perspective that Carl doesn't like. Does Carl really think that you can't argue the case for your personal perspective? That talking about your personal perspective on a piece of media is a waste of time? Well, no. Carl has done this with Sarkeesian's work in the past, 
and it's the very basis of this response to Big Joel. If he didn't believe that arguing for your personal perspective was possible, this video would serve no purpose. The point of this video isn't to address Joel's criticisms, or even to respond to them. The point of this video is to dismiss them, and to give his audience a reason to dismiss them. This isn't just an attack on people's ability to interpret media, it's an attack on the very concept of discussing art.